What's up, everyone? In this podcast, Alex, James, and I will be talking about the overall market conditions, sharing some stories, and talking about how we are all doing and feeling in our trading. So stick around, listen up, because this is an episode that you're not going to want to miss. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, Alex is finally back from his uh, Disneyland vacation, which is nice. Uh, how was that, Alex? It looked like a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, man. It was a lot of fun. That was actually the uh, first time I've been to Disney World since I was like a child. And when you go when you're a child, you don't really remember what it's like. So going as an adult was a lot of fun. And we had this uh, Disney VIP, so we skipped okay. all the lines. I didn't know that the lines there are an hour, hour and a yep. half long each. So well, people go know. to Disney and they go for like four, they go for four rides and then they got to go home. But in total, I think we did like every single ride that they had, like maybe 20 rides there. So that was really fun. But it's good to be back. And now that we're back, the entire world is crashing all over again. Dude, I, know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I feel like every time we do this podcast, so I actually like that this, it's been two weeks since you've been back. And I like now that, a lot has changed and the market is just a continued bloodbath every day. And I think, I don't think people believe like Powell when he said like, basically we're, they're going to use every tool they can to like crush the economy. And they pretty much are. I mean, that's where we're at right now. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's kind of sad, but like, you know, this is what has to happen. I mean, if you guys saw the currencies crash now, right? So the yeah. Euro, I think is 96 cents against the dollar. I think the pound went from being like 1.4 to like 1.06. So everyone's losing not only the value of their money and play, it's really, really bad. And the crazy part is like not to get political, but like the media is not talking about it because if they no. talk about it, it's going to make our current leadership look like clowns, you know? Well, it's our fault, right? I mean, the fact is like everyone was really nervous about the U.S. being like the non-dominant currency. And like now all of a sudden that inflation is like, I don't know if you guys saw in like, Turkey, like inflation is like 20%, like or some yeah. outrageous number. Yeah. And now like we're crushing all the other countries around the world, just in our dollar is strong like, again, which is like, sounds like I don't even know us, how the fuck that's possible. Like, I don't either. It, it, it goes over my head because here we are, like we're in a huge crisis in our country. Like our economy is getting crippled, but the dollar is strong. And like all around the world, people are forced to like, just pay more money for everything. Like we're I mean, a lot more money, a lot more money. Yeah. Not only is their currency down 30%, our currency is up 30%. You know what I'm saying? So it's double whammy. And yeah. I feel like it can get a lot worse too. I mean, like there, yeah. there's so much growing tension with everything else, right? There's like Taiwan, there's obviously Russia. And it's like, I feel like we're just starting. And I saw like this video, it was a uh, uh, drunken Miller. He was talking about how, you know, we could be in for like a 10 year of just stagnant economy. Yes, you know, I, yeah, I think people forget that that's that can happen because we've had this euphoric like run since like 2008. Like after the after the crash and everything, once they injected all the money back into the country, it's just been like you could close your eyes, pick an American stock, and like make money. And I, what I think it's gonna stock. happen. I hope it doesn't happen. What I think is gonna happen is it's gonna keep happening until we get new leadership. And the potential new candidate running is gonna run on I'm gonna fix the economy. I think yeah. that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And then when that new candidate comes in, <clears throat> whether the Fed you know, keeps raising interest rates or not, they're going to be putting pressure on all the industries to be able to fix it. Because right now, this guy doesn't even know what year we're in. Probably doesn't even know what inflation is. So because of that, I mean, I think we're really doomed. I really think we're doomed. And it's kind of sad. It's kind of bad. And with mortgage rates hitting 7% when we're recording yeah. this video, I mean, real estate's next. Don't be fooled. Yep. Real estate may not go down 50%, but it's probably going to go down 20 to 30%. So it all goes in cycles, right? First, it's the stock market, and then it's real estate. And then probably when real estate starts to go down within the next couple of months, maybe the stock market's going to start to rebound. Then six months after that is when real estate's going to rebound. But like the reality is we don't really know what's happening because right now people aren't making money, right? We see it in the market as well. Like if you guys paid attention, like, after 1030 in the market, the volume just shrinks. Yeah, All the it's gone. are gone. Right? Yeah, it's gone. gone. So most people don't have any excess money, right? And I'm convinced that a lot of these um a lot of these casinos, a lot of these strip clubs, a lot of these people where places where people put their excess money in good times are gonna be really, really bad for a really long time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because just like the stock market, people aren't gambling on hot stocks anymore because they got no more money. And the money that they have 
they got to save it because you don't know what's going to happen. Even me. I mean, I'm not as aggressive with my spending habits anymore because I don't know what the hell is going to happen. You know? Yeah, I yeah, agree. Did I, <laughs> have you guys seen the, uh, it's called like the stripper index and it's like. I was like, just about <laughs> to mention that. I was literally just about to mention that. Dude, that shit gets me. because, But it's the most true thing ever, right? It's like when, the, yeah. when shit's hitting the fan, it's like strippers are moving back to other places. They're moving out of Miami because they're just, they're not making money. Yeah. <laughs> they're getting the fuck out of there. And I think credit card debt is at the highest it's ever been because people can't afford to, you know, pay for stuff. So credit card uh, expenses are going up rents are going up because people can't afford mortgages anymore it's it's a lot of crazy stuff that's happening and it really really seems like there's no hope until something changes and whether it be maybe like an inflation number changing or whether it be some sort of catalyst like the war ending there has to be a catalyst for things to change and it seems like in no foreseeable future is there any catalyst and in a few weeks is earnings season so these companies, when they start missing their earnings, it's going to balloon even lower, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is the first time, like, even, like, major <clears throat> companies like Apple got fucking rocked yesterday. Like, <laughs> Apple and, like, all these big companies that were, like, safe havens for years are starting to, like, everything's coming down. And I feel even like, yesterday, yeah. like, Nike. Like, if you look at a chart of Nike, yesterday uh, they went down from 98 to 85. If you look at the daily chart, they're down yeah. from 180 to 85. A company like Nike is down 50%, bro. Nike, you know, Nike, this this is yeah. the heart of like just normal. Like it's not you spend 200 bucks on sneakers. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like the heart of like retail, the heart of what people kind of feel safe in. And, you know, when companies like Nike are saying that they have inventory problems, that they're going to fire sale their inventory because they got too much stuff. I mean, it's not really looking good. If a company like Nike, if a company like Apple can't make money, how are we going to make money? Yeah, exactly. Like Apple, like they said that like people aren't buying their new phone, you know? Why should they? They It's the same phone. Yeah, exactly. 100%. No, I, I completely agree. Yeah, and in the past, people had all the extra money, right? Like, so they didn't give a yeah. shit. They're like, oh, fuck it. What's a thousand dollars on a new phone? But now, like, dude, I, um, a lot of my friends recently have been like trying to buy houses, which I just think is crazy, but a lot of them have. And their mortgages are like four to five K. A, yeah. a month on these like cheap houses and i'm like yeah. no one has the extra money anymore it's the interest rate it's not it's only the it's not only the fact that they don't have the extra money is they're not making enough money anymore i mean you guys see it even in the market you know we're not really making as much money as we used to be and that's yeah. that's just what the environment is and imagine overall businesses like nike's not making as much money apple's not making as much money fucking facebook's not making as much money no one's making as much money so when there's not that money in circulation kind of going from hand to hand to hand to hand, there's nothing. All the money that's happening is going to Ukraine, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but this is why it's so hard. And like people see the the positives of being like a trader and stuff and like relying on the market for an income. But it's like when times like this happen, it's like, dude, there's just no range. There's like not like we had two days where I was like, oh, my God, are we having runners? Because we just had those two like massive, massive yeah. runners. And I, and I felt like that was kind of like our last hurrah because we're back to like this is just nothing mm -hmm. you know and it's like that's where it gets tough and i i don't think financial literacy is like taught at all so it's like imagine like we're very blessed to be able to have a job where we can come and like still make money even when there's not that much opportunity but like imagine being someone who's just making like 50k a year and it's like how do you then fight what's happening now it's almost impossible yeah and the thing is that like a lot of people will, are not willing to drop their lifestyle let's say you have like a pretty expensive lifestyle you have a nice apartment you have a nice car you have this you have that i mean if you have no savings and if you have a lot of issues i mean it might be time to downgrade that mercedes to a prius yeah. it might be time to get a smaller apartment at least for a year so that you could build up extra capital to last a storm and i think a lot of people rather than doing that they just get into more debt right yeah. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Oh, I was I mean, just gonna say one thing about uh, the houses here. I don't know if you guys have the same problem, but in Canada, the housing like supply is very, very, very little. Like, there's not enough houses for the amount of people here. So everyone like in Canada like moved during COVID. Like everyone, it seemed that they were selling their house, they were moving. A lot of people from places like Ontario, Toronto came where I lived, like out east, a lot of people went out west, people went to Alberta, and they all got these super, super, super low fixed rates. Yeah. And so now no one is selling their house. Like, so it's like, like, 
I don't even know if we're going to have like necessarily like a big crash here because there there is a still a ton of demand, but no one can get mortgages, but no yeah. one's selling. So it's like no one can afford to buy a house, but also like no one's selling their house. So we have no inventory and also like no demand, you know, we have no supply and no demand. So it's like, what the yeah. fuck happens then? Dude, you know, people can't afford it, bro. They can't afford it. Like, it's like uh, right now in America, if you buy a $600,000 house with, if you can't put 20% down, if you're putting like 5% or whatever, dude, your mortgage is $5,000. Yeah, $5,000 is a lot of money. And that's without the cost of like running a house. Yeah. You're talking like six, six, seven grand a month just to have a home. That's not worth it to me. I mean, fuck no, I, yeah. I could never. It's going to be a like, bad time. It's bad time to buy houses. But the problem is that, you know, some people just need it and they have no choice. They got to buy it. You know what true. I'm saying? That's, that's the sucky part is like, yeah. what are you going to do? It, it, it sucks. But like that's, that's kind of the environment we're in. And it's crazy because, you know, just six to seven months ago, interest rates were 2%. Now yeah. it's yeah. almost like quadruple, bro. Quadruple, you know? Yeah. And the craziest part is like the Federal Reserve just keeps raising interest rates. It just keeps going and going and going and going. I think they're gonna keep going until something fucking breaks, you know? Yeah, yeah I, I think I think we're gonna break it. Yeah, we're already broken. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think with the Fed, like it's like the the thing that I don't understand is like they they've got to know what they're doing, you know? They've got to know because hundred percent, bro. They know exactly what they're doing. What they're gonna I do is they're an gonna... idiot. They're yeah. going to crash oh. the market and then they're going to buy it right back themselves. That's all they're doing. Yeah, they're going to crash the market and they're going to buy it back with $2 trillion. And then when the market rebounds 30%, they're going to make their fucking $600 billion. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And it's like during COVID, like, it, during, like I, I feel like now is worse than COVID. Like you're raising interest rates in like one of the worst environments ever. And it's like, it, it, this is like way worse than COVID. Like this feels way worse than COVID. Like this is, feels like what COVID was supposed to feel like, you know, yeah. during COVID, like literally like it seemed everything was booming. Yes, we had the lockdowns and yes, we had whatever. And yes, we had the economy, but it's nothing like it is now. You yeah, know? this is, this is what was supposed to actually happen during yeah. COVID. But when they gave everyone a stimulus check, it kind of temporarily put a bandaid on it. And now that that bandaid is ripped off, uh, this is what the reality is. And if you look, overall mortgage down 35% on the year. Yeah. Individual stocks are down 50 to 70% on the year. So it's it's going to be painful. And it is painful. But, you know, this is, if we could last this storm, this is where, like, the real money is made. Because everything is a discount. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's going to eventually come back. I don't know what the time frame is, but it's going to come back because everything moves in cycles. We are in, we were in one of the most aggressive bull markets. Now we're in one of the most aggressive bear markets. So we just have to kind of be patient and see what happens. But in terms of, you know, overall lifestyle is everyone's got to cut their lifestyle. Everyone's got to spend less. Everyone's got to adapt. And just because you had nice things last year and the year before doesn't mean that you're guaranteed it this year. So you know, just protect yourself, you know? Yeah. The problem is in America, dude, it's so hard for people to like downgrade their lifestyle because we've built up this like culture of like any sort of downgrade is seen as like a negative and it's seen as like you're a failure when the reality is like, if you're smart enough to just like stop spending like a jackass and like, like I, I would imagine like during COVID, like the, like Richard Milley sales and like Rolex sales, like all that shit was like through the roof. Right. And like, I bet right now that shit's like way slowed down, even for the wealthiest people, you know, it has to. You know, so it's like it's but those people are smart enough to slow down. And unfortunately, during times like this, I feel like it's the it's the poor people that actually get fucked the most because it's just going to become a bigger divide. Right. Like the wealthy people. We spoke we spoke about this in one of the previous podcasts. The only way to fix this. Right. The only way to fix this is to have a severe recession where all the prices come back to normal or to print money and cause more inflation. Right now, there's way too much pressure to print, uh, to not print money, so they can't do that. So they have no choice but to crash everything because you guys know no one wants to work. No yeah. one wants to work anymore. So they need to kind of make everyone so broke that they have no choice but to work. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and I mean it's just gonna keep going, you know. And again, I I, I find that it's what sucks is over the last like ten years, so many people have had the opportunity to like learn a skill like like trading or something to like protect themselves during these environments because most people i know are nervous right and they're worried about what's going on but like 
I don't think any of us are like, we get to like, still like live a decent life, but like, we're just smart enough to not overextend right now. Yeah, and it's that's been the it, biggest thing, bro. That's been the biggest thing that's helped me all my life is I spend way less than I make. I live way under my means. And that's why I feel comfortable. Whereas a lot of people in America spend way over their means, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. Guys, people making 50 K a year spend like they make 150 K a year, you know? Yeah. yeah. I feel like Whereas you also I, are let's say I make uh let's say someone makes 150k a year, they should spend maybe 50k a year, you know? Yeah. I mean that what's the science of it? It's like if you can if you can invest and save like 50% of what you make, you know, I mean you could just set yourself up financially for the rest of your life. Yeah. The problem yeah. is now you make 50, you spend like you make 150. And, and then now you're in debt and interest rates go up, you owe more debt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's tough. But I mean, like, what do you guys recommend for people who I mean, it's tough, right? Because this is a really hard subject. But like people who aren't making that much money, what can you even do in times like this? Because your dollar is going way, way less, like way, it's not going as far as it used to. And you don't have the money to like invest in stuff like that. Is it literally just stockpile cash, like you say, and just save as much stock, as possible? I think stockpile cash. I think stockpile cash. Keep as much money in the bank as you can. Uh, you shouldn't invest money that you can't really like except to lose and if you're a little bit of a lower income type person i think all you gotta do is save your money yeah. maybe take no vacations this year and maybe when things get better take two that year but <clears throat> i think everyone has the ability to save i think people just want to flex on other people and that's why they can't save you know yeah exactly yeah. i mean that's why i love bow to be honest i love bow because you know for as much money as this guy has he's just, he's like a richest god kind of thing but he just walks around in like sandals and like a white t-shirt and like just like TJ Maxx shorts and like doesn't give a fuck, you know. He, I mean, of course he has, he's got the toys, he's got the nice stuff, but at the end of the day, he's just like whatever, dude. What do you got to flex for? And yeah. <laughs> it's also a personality. Like you have to be a certain personality to be like that, you know. Not everyone is like that. Not yeah. everyone can check in a fucking garbage bag on the way <laughs> home from a Utah meetup. Dude, I saw bro. that and I was in tears. I was like, that is the most. That's not the first time that's happened either, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, it's wild. But, you know, I mean, again, he's kind of, he practices what he preaches too. And like you said, it's personality. But at the same time, it's like, you know, someone like that's not going to get fucked over, you know, as things go to shit. You yeah. know, and so I, I find myself very blessed to have, you know, met you guys and, and learn from all of you guys because it's how else can you learn financial literacy except for people who understand it and, and like kind of practice what they preach. So, yep, you know, I agree, bro. I agree. And another thing that I want to kind of mention is like, how you guys been doing in this market? I feel like a lot of people are struggling, which is normal. I had a lot of people like reach out to me, you know, past couple of days and like, hey, man, like I made a bunch of money last year and I'm not really able to get much footing this year. You know, I'm struggling this year. Things have been a little bit tough this year. Like, do you have any advice for me? And I was like, this has been the hardest year in the market. And this has been the most meltdown in like the last 20 years. This has been the hardest market in the last decade, right? Or the past two decades. And yep. just because you're struggling in this market doesn't mean that you're a horrible trader. Doesn't mean that you're the worst trader ever. It just means that the market conditions are so tough to make money in and you shouldn't take it personally. So I feel like a lot of people that feel like they're struggling in this market I mean, number one is go back to, are you sticking to the process? If you're sticking to the process and you're losing, it's not your fault. It's just the market we're in. The yeah. market we're in is very unforgiving. It is a very, very, very difficult market. And our job this year in 2022, the entire year is to stay alive. It's not to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, not to make millions of dollars, not to fucking get rich. Our job is to stay alive because 95% of people are not staying alive. So if you're staying alive, that means you're winning in this market. So don't think yeah. that I made half a million dollars last year. Why am I only up 20K this year? 20K this year is better than 95% of people because everyone's yeah. losing their ass. And when yeah. things get better next year, or maybe the year after, then who knows? Maybe you'll make triple that, quadruple that, whatever it is. So <clears throat> that's why I kind of wanted to lean on you guys because I know no one's really making crazy money this year. It's, it's really tough to make money. You know, I'm still not really making as much money as I should. I'm still doing solid, but... The point is that like, I know a lot of people <clears throat> that haven't been trading eight and a half years like me are struggling. And for those people watching this, you know, don't think that you're an obsolete trader. Don't think that you're the worst trader ever because you can't make money this year. The reality is hedge funds, institutions, prop firms, no one is making money this year. No one. So don't take it personally and just go back to the drawing board and tell yourself, hey, I'm going to size down. 
And I'm just trying to stay alive because staying alive in this market is a win. That is my that is my key. I must stay alive. Yep. Dude, yeah. I think um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock on wood here, but like I've been really lucky this year. Um, like I've had it's been a really good year, but I've had tough months. Um, yeah. you know, like there's yeah. been months where like like honest to God, all of August was really hard for me. Like I didn't lose a lot of money. I just wasn't getting traction. Like I wasn't, yeah. I would have, I'd basically like be breaking even day in day out. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like at the end of the month, I'm like, but I pride myself on the fact that like, and I've always kind of been like, this is just that I didn't lose. <laughs> and like, if I, yeah. I've always felt like if I could keep that mentality, like, listen, I feel like there's, there's like this famous quote. It's like, there's times to, there's times to trade and there's times to go fishing or whatever that whole quote is. And it's like, yes. there's just times where it's like risk is kind of off and like, you know, we haven't had that opportunity to like size up or even push size or like change anything. And, you know, as long so as the environment, bro, we're that's the it, man, there's just, there's no liquidity. It's just not there. Right. And I've, I've told myself kind of when the market started crashing too, you need to manage your own expectations. Um, you know, yesterday, actually, again, I'm going to fucking knock on wood. I don't want to jinx anything. Like I wired out a shit ton of money and I was like, you know what, I'm going to pay myself and put myself in a position where I'm just comfortable sitting in, in cash and, and lower my account. So that way I don't do anything yeah. dumb. And, you know, I just want to keep that going. That's really it. And, you know, I feel blessed that MIC in particular taught me a, like a foundation and a real process to like, you know, not just continuously push. Like you see people on Twitter, you see people still trying to, they made you $3 million. You see the people on Twitter, bro. They're all going broke. Yeah. They're doing, yeah. I mean, and they Twitter is not millions. the same anymore. No, yeah, and that's that's also a good point, James. The point is that you know we we can't. It's okay. So let's traders are very emotional beings, right? Like humans are emotional, and men in particular are very stubborn. Okay, men have an ego. Men don't like to be wrong, right? That's why some women yeah. are better than better traders than men. I say it yeah. all the time. Like women are trader better traders than men because they don't have an ego, right? So. The thing is, when you're making money for a year straight last year, everything is easy. It's so simple to make money. And you're all of a sudden, your lifestyle is getting better. You're able to get more steak dinners. Maybe you get a nice bottle of Opus this time instead of the bullshit $10 yeah. wine. And then all of a sudden. Yeah, bro. I'm back to now, Josh now. You now, <laughs> you, now can't make, you now can't make any money. And that for a man that has an ego that doesn't like yeah. to be wrong fucks with your head. So that is the hardest part about this year is a lot of people are like, what the hell is going on? I'm the man. I made so much money. I could make it again. Then you oversize into bad setups to make up for it. And then your losses balloon even more. Right. I think I started sizing down very early this year and it was a couple months. I was just sizing down, sizing down, sizing down. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of people were curious as to why I was doing that, but like the market conditions changed. So I had to change. So as a trader that, you know, wants to do this long-term and wants to do this for the next decade or maybe even the next two decades, you know, you have to realize that there's going to be months or there's even going to be a year where you make no money. Yeah. But for example, if I made, you know, $500,000 in 2021, but I make zero in 2022, then you can think to yourself, you know what? I made a quarter million in 2021. And I made a quarter million in 2022. And then maybe in 2023 comes along, you're going to make 500,000. And then maybe in 2024, you're gonna make another 500,000. Yeah. In 2025, you're going to make zero. You're going to tell yourself, okay, now I made this and I made that. So Trading is very odd because it's not like a linear job that we're taught. It's not that you show up, you clock in, you get your paycheck. You know, our paycheck might be a lump sum in 2021 and be nothing on 2022. Yeah. So we have to start to adapt our brains to understand that concept. Yeah. I mean, and I think with me, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm a greedy fuck. Like I'm literally so fucking greedy. Like that's been, the, Canadian. That's been the biggest <laughs> fucking problem yeah, for me is that like, <laughs> Like literally, like I made like this this week was like the thing is is that last week like I wasn't even showing up as much because like I was just like you know what there's no volume I'm not gonna show up and lose like I, I would literally write in the chat like there were a couple of days where I was like you know what I'm just gonna take the day off and not sure. put myself through that and I think for a lot of other long traders like a lot of people are pressing super 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 hard like when's the last time that you saw a good first bounce work like. That's kind Sometimes. of the state of the market, market environment. The market environment yeah. isn't giving it. 
Yeah, it's exactly. You, like and the so, first death line is what it's giving you. And so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so like, like for me, like it, it was the day after we had that, we had that big runner from like whatever, like, and I hadn't seen that for so long where we broke out of the range and we really were, went to like nine and Alex was talking about like the broker liquidations. I was like, all right, baby. Oh, we ATXI. Might, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yep. all right, baby. We might be fucking coming back. We might be coming back. So the next fucking day, what do I do? I get in this stock. I forget what I got in. I got in at like 840. The shit goes to 10 bucks and I don't fucking sell. Yeah, and there is not a single fucking bounce on the way down, and I end up selling it like what? Like, and let me tell you something, Harry. That same thing that you're doing on the longs is what people are doing yeah. on the shorts because they are trying to compensate yeah. for lack of income, and that's 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 a big thing. So I'm making these live trading videos now because, like, I think I'm I, from. I realize that the education that we provide is as good as it is. It's too boring for these people, right? People don't want to learn how to get rich. It's just whatever it is what it is so i think having these live trading videos and letting people see me trade live will teach them a lot about these things and one of the things that i continuously say in these live trading videos is i'm taking my profits i'm not setting a bullshit artificial price target in my head yeah. i'm not saying that an offering is coming and i'm going to hold all day i'm not doing it i'm just taking my profits over and over again and you'll be surprised how much it adds up right so I get it. It's human greed. All humans are greedy, Harry. Every single human's greedy. It's not just you. Yeah. Every single I'm greedy too. James yeah. greedy. Everyone's greedy. It's human emotion. Right? Human emotion can't be taken away. But what we could do to fight that is just take the money when it comes in our favor. Yeah. We want to be able to make that big profit because we haven't seen it in so long. We need it and we feel like we are owed it. The problem is that the market is very relentless and don't give a shit. So the problem is everyone's holding for big picture plays because they haven't made enough money. Everyone is sizing up because they haven't made money. But back to the fact, if you size down, stay alive, the plays will come back and you will make money. You know, I think, I think we get stuck in this mentality too of like, like if you're not making thousands and thousands of dollars a day, it's a waste. But the reality is, dude, I mean, if you make $10,000 a day in America... It's heck, I mean, of course you can spend it, but like day-to-day -day life, you don't need that much money to like have a fantastic, amazing life. Like if you're making $500 a day trading, dude, I hate to tell everybody, but like you can have a solid life. I mean, you can build a really a day great trading time. is like $125,000 a year. Yeah, right? which yeah. is more than most people make. And then you have a normal, a, a daytime job and like you're killing it, you know? So it's just- The problem it is, is the comparison back. game, bro. Yeah. We fucking compare ourselves to people. Like I see people comparing themselves to me. I compare myself to hedge fund traders. They compare themselves to fucking uh, Bobby Axelrod who compares himself to fucking Paul Tudor Jones. Like it, it doesn't end, right? It doesn't end. The only thing that we could do is just kind of focus on ourselves because you don't know what type of um, life the person that you're trying to emulate has outside of the market, right? So for example, trader I know makes maybe um, 10 to $15 million a year. Okay. That's a lot of money, money, bro. A lot of money, right? And everyone wants to make 10 to $15 million a year. But what this trader does is he eats, sleeps, and breathes trading. Every single day before the market opens, he's got a detailed plan. Every single day when the market closes, he writes a recap, goes to trading psychologist, is on vacation, is trading, is doing this. Trading is his entire life. He breathes trading. For me, I can't do that. That's not who I am. I need to be able to watch TV sometimes, right? I need to be able to leave the house sometimes. I need to be able to not make trading my life. And because of that, I can never have that, those type of uh, gains. So you have to realize what type of trader do you want to be? Do you want to be a trader that has more freedom in their life? Do you want to be a trader that makes a little bit less and is happier? Or do you want to make a trade or do you want to be a trader that makes so much money that it doesn't matter, but you have to sacrifice your entire life for it, you know? Yeah. I feel like, I feel like as I've gotten older and like, Alex, you've definitely helped me like kind of learn this too. Cause I remember we used to get on the phone and I'd talk about how I was like so pissed. Like I wasn't making enough money that I wanted and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it was years ago, but now it's kind of like, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like I'd rather the peace of mind um, yeah. rather than the stress, the, just the overall stress. And like, that's something I've noticed with you and you've, you've changed so much. Is like when we first met is like, you were always stressed, bro. Like you were always like, yeah. 
you look like you were ready to blow up, you know, like your mind, yeah. you're just stressed. And now it's like, yeah, you're like, you know what? You actually enjoy it. And, you know, I remember the last couple of months, I'm like, damn, Alex like doesn't trade as like, he just doesn't come to the market the same way, but it's like, because it's just not there. You're, you've it's not the there, bro. And less is more, less yep. is more. I don't want to stick to the screens all day. I don't want to uh, get myself into trouble. I don't want to, because I got enough problems in my personal life, but I don't need the training world to give me more problems, you know? Agreed. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, go for it, Harry. Uh, no, I was just going to say, I think for me, like, I had nailed, like, this summer was like, I, I did great this summer. And I did, I did really, really, really good in the, in the spring um, <clears throat> and in January. But, like, this, like, time period for me is, like, there's no range for me to really work with. There's not as many hot stocks for me to really work with. The ones that do kind of pop pre-market, like you, you pretty much know that they're going to fade. Like what? One out of every 90 actually ends up running. So it's like, for me, like you just really have to kind of wait for that range to be established and see if the stock can start to kind of come back. And then when it comes back on that kind of second push, we just kind of pop up stuff and then that's it, you know? So for me, it was kind of hard to adapt where... I had had such big gains, like from $8 to $12 or from fucking, you know, like if I was going through my own recaps, like the other day and, you know, I was like, wow, like the range I had to work with, like I was so blessed and I didn't even realize where now it's like, we're not getting that much volume. If you want a long in the afternoon, that's pretty much a fucking death wish, you know? <laughs> and so I just think like when I finally was up from like, eight dollars like literally eight eight dollars into fucking ten and i'm like oh this one's I'm gonna 20. be the, the one that lights up and fucking halts up at the open and then we just go down and we're fucking bounceless and after yeah. that i was just like shit like what the fuck am i doing you know i think that was the biggest wake-up call for me where i was like man like it's not the same anymore like you just got to take the gains you just got to run Times have changed, bro. We have to adapt to it. But even yesterday on like SN, like T, whatever that stock was, I was in from fucking a buck eighty, and I was like, maybe this can break over two. Maybe this can break over two. Maybe this can fucking break over two. And it's like it tries so hard to go hard to go higher, but we just fucking can't. So I end up just selling for like a twenty cent gain. And it's like, yeah, holy, yeah, dude. That's that's the market we're in, bro. Yeah, yeah. I think I think like obviously as we're you know kind of coming up on the end of the episode it's just like it's just lessons to learn and like if you're a trader right now like alex said you can't really beat yourself up you have to really just take what the market gives you and sometimes it's okay to just not trade to be yeah. honest focus on education right now i think now while it's slow is like the best time you can like watch the videos we provide watch all the education and like get yourself ready because when the time changes then it's all guns blazing but right now it's just kind of stockpiling ammo we're just kind of chilling just waiting taking what the market gives day in day out a small paycheck and then you know, it will change. And when we, when it does, we'll all be ready. So yep. I think that that's definitely it. So, yep. So if you guys like the video, just let us know what topics you want to talk about. Leave a comment and let us know if you guys want us to talk about cars next week. If you guys want us to talk about uh, personal life next week, if you guys want to talk yeah. about trading next week, whatever it may be, just let us know so that, you know, we could kind of tailor the conversations based on what you guys want to see. Right. Cause we may think that this inflation stuff is interesting, but maybe you guys are like fuck inflation. I've heard enough of it. Let's talk <laughs> yeah, about something exactly. else, right. So just let us know, guys. Leave a comment and just tell us what you guys want to see more, what you guys want to see less of. And, you know, we'll try to come back and make it better. Yeah, yeah 100%. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Yeah, right, we'll thanks, see you guys. Everyone.